Good morning, folks. It's a climate change kind of news today, and we're starting in 304 angstroms with ionized helium here seeing plasma filaments dance and skip around the limbs. We're going to spaceweathernews.com to start, and we find the southern coronal hole crossing central heliographic longitudes. There are the most minor blips and small contributions to the solar wind from the surrounding regions, and while we await the solar wind from that coronal hole, we find the current plasma stream is calm. All marks are in normal, quiet range, with a bit of phi-angle variability allowing the KP to stretch its legs without leaving the calm green territory. Largest earthquake of the last day struck the Philippines, but the top event overall when including how rare the earthquake was can be found in Texas, 5.0 in the western part of the state. Let's do one cosmology paper before getting into an onslaught of climate articles. There has been one observation of space that dark matter scientists have been clinging to for hope that it will provide an end to the incredibly expensive failure to search for the magic missing mass. Team here from Michigan and Berkeley saying no, no, just no. Up next, graduation means you're ready to play with the big dogs, especially if you come out of Johns Hopkins. But sadly, we are seeing here that the top crop at one of the USA's top universities addressing one of the top topics in science today has completely ignored the modern state of the field. Not only is the new particle forcing from the sun not included here, the word solar is not found in the paper. There is a brief mention of the old irradiance measures and that's it. It is going to be a very rude awakening for this one when he realizes that they were only given half the story at that very expensive university. So now let's move on to the swirls of the world. We've got them in both the atmosphere and in the oceans, and they're more important than most people realize, because the tropics of Earth would be unbearably hot, and the polar zones permanently frosted beyond human visitation potential if not for those swirling vortices, the cyclones and eddies of the Earth. Not only are they the main reason that the temperature of this planet is much more stable and well distributed than it otherwise could be, but every single one of those swirls is a column for the global electric circuit the tip of the sword in solar climate forcing. And in that vein, we move next to the central Pacific waters and what drives El Ninos. Folks in the wake of the last five years proving the sun plays a vastly greater role in El Nino and La Nina than they thought, that's ENSO, were coming around to pull the rug out from volcanoes in that same realm. The volcanic forcing that was thought to exist was some of the last bits of natural variability to the oscillation that did not go to the sun. Turns out the aerosol mixing and dynamics due to cosmic rays and space energy is just more controlling by comparison than they believed it to be with volcanic emission. Now from the oceans to the high sky, the jets, and if there's one thing proven more in the last few years than the effect of the sun on major oscillations, modes, and circulations, it's the effect on the jets and vortices. Now the author, Paul Vusen, not exactly known for loving solar climate forcing papers, and he managed to set himself up here. Because in describing how critical these jet stream blockings are to major weather stalls, he opened the door to whatever the actual answer is, and which he does not definitively give, will be a vastly greater climate controller than was believed before. And as I mentioned, polar vortex, jet stream position, jet stream strength to hold back blocking events comes with modulation by solar flares, solar wind, solar protons, and geomagnetic storms. Last but not least, with all the talk of climate change, you might not think of us living in a period of climate stability, but we definitely do. The small variability like one degree of global warming so far is nothing compared to the 25 degree drops into ice ages, three degree spikes in temperature during major solar flares and the major storms that come along with them. The same ancestors of ours who could predict eclipses, invented geometry and architecture and philosophy, also swear on their lives that their most important stories are from when the gods attacked. The earth can turn on the juice, throwing curveballs at us so foreign that if you don't know any better, you're going to think the sun and ocean and the wind and water are gods and that they're mad at you. It begins in the ocean, as this paper states here, with the Atlantic. That's the key to the study. The climate has been very kind to us for a while. It can go ballistic. And again, it starts in the ocean. And from the oceans to the jets, to cosmic ray cloud forcing and solar wind coupling to the troposphere, NASA, top universities, and the UN's IPCC have already changed the game to allow the sun its place. True, 
The mainstream news hasn't said much about it, but the data set is official. The papers are already coming out. Our solar climate forcing textbook is used in universities, and the third edition coming out this summer will be used this fall. The direction is clear. It's the sun, and our future is cold. If you haven't seen the climate playlist in the description box below the video, it is one of the most important things we do here. Check it out. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.